Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I've got a detailed forecast update coming your way for Wednesday the 12th of November 2025. Severe thunderstorm activity is expected to be quite extensive this weekend through southeast Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. We've also got a developing tropical low or even a developing tropical cyclone towards the northwest of WA and the Northern Territory. All the details on these weather events plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things with the severe thunderstorm threat across southeastern and south central. Queensland, which is going to be quite extensive rather this weekend. Now, you've heard me right, more severe thunderstorms on the forecast this weekend. They're going to begin developing though tomorrow afternoon and evening. And the situation that we have developing right now is moisture coming in from the Coral Sea. Not only is that providing a few showers towards the North Queensland coastline, but it's beginning to fuel what we're going to be seeing in terms of thunderstorm activity through this part of central Queensland as we get out towards this weekend. Let me show you what I mean by that. Thunderstorms expected to be quite widespread through central Queensland tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening, some of which could be severe around the Charleville area extending towards the northwest up towards Longreach with damaging winds, potentially heavy rainfall and some small hailstones expected. We'll then be talking about these severe thunderstorms becoming a much more widespread and expansive risk as we get out towards south central Queensland through Friday afternoon and evening and plenty of strong thunderstorms are expected to develop through central and central western Queensland here at Charleville and towards the west of there out towards Thargaminder and Quilpie and towards western Queensland and also some strong thunderstorm potential now along the border between New South Wales and Queensland. Queensland through tomorrow afternoon and evening, not to mention some strong thunderstorm potential into the northeast of New South Wales, a lot of which could be severe tomorrow afternoon with large hailstones, damaging winds and heavy rainfall, and the potential for large hailstones, damaging winds and heavy rainfall also along the Queensland New South Wales border as well. A few showers coming in off the Coral Sea, which is going to keep things wet across the Sunshine Coast tomorrow. Widespread rainfall accumulations between 2 to 15 millimetres can be expected from on and off shower activity. This will tend to storms towards the north of Rockhampton, but they'll be very sporadic and hit or miss in nature and then later in the afternoon and into the early evening we'll be seeing these severe thunderstorms make it into the western parts of southeastern Queensland out towards Toowoomba and Warwick and through the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs and then eventually into the Lockyer Valley and Wyvernhoe Outlook and potentially some strong thunderstorm activity make it in, into the Brisbane area or at least for her northern and western suburbs as well into the Sanford Valley and potentially up towards Caboolture, Bribe Island and Redcliffe as well. I'm not expecting anything too crazy to occur into the Brisbane and especially the Gold Coast area tomorrow afternoon and evening but if there is going to be strong severe thunderstorms into the Queensland area. It will be just towards the west of Brisbane through parts of the Lockyer Valley and then out towards Toowoomba, Ipswich and Warwick. Some strong thunderstorm potential looks to be on the cards in that part of Queensland. Not to mention some strong thunderstorm activity extending throughout Roma and Charleville as we've already discussed at the start of this update. Strong thunderstorm potential continues as we push things forward in towards Friday. You can see these thunderstorms late Friday night into early Saturday morning upscaling dramatically and becoming a large and powerful squall line with heavy rainfall damaging wind gusts potentially destructive wind gusts and likely a lot of small to potentially large sized hailstones as well. This will march across central Queensland. It's expected to make it towards the coast but it's not going to get there. As we get out towards Friday night you can see this thunderstorm line dropping off as it makes it into the Sunshine Coast and through the South Burnett Forecast District where thunderstorms are not expected to be widespread but still some severe thunderstorms expected to persist right through Friday night and then to early Sunday morning and then through early Sunday afternoon severe thunderstorms expected to get themselves going quite early on in towards western Queensland. Saturday is the big one particularly for for central Queensland and also for parts of southeastern Queensland, a lot of big thunderstorm potential lies ahead on Saturday. Developing early in the afternoon, strong thunderstorms expected out towards central Queensland. This includes Charleville, Roma, up towards Windora, Longreach and Huendon. These are going to be our pulse thunderstorms, so pulsy in nature. They're going to crash in on each other uh, pretty quickly and become multicellular thunderstorms, but also the potential for some supercellular thunderstorms closer to the Queensland New South Wales border, where there's going to be more instability and more wind shear in the environment, and also some strong thunderstorm potential getting itself going from about 2 o'clock in the afternoon through parts of the mid north coast and into the northeast of New South Wales as well. Thunderstorms will be a few hours later than that into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area, but severe thunderstorm activity is expected to pipe up from about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon uh, towards west of Toowoomba and Warwick and this will carry over in towards the Toowoomba and the Warwick area by around 4.30 and then into the Brisbane area by around 5.30 or 6pm. We could see some strong severe thunderstorm activity with the potential for one or two supercell thunderstorms towards the west of Toowoomba and Warwick. However, by the time they make themselves into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area, if they even do get there, they'll likely be upscaled versions of their stronger selves, these thunderstorms that they were earlier on in the afternoon. It also looks like severe thunderstorm chances into the Brisbane area only begin to rise after about 6 o'clock in the evening 
evening and probably begin to build it around seven or eight o'clock in the evening. So it really doesn't look like it's gonna be a great day for severe thunderstorm potentially into the Gold Coast area, but also for the Brisbane area too. That's not to say that one or two strong thunderstorms won't cross into the Brisbane area, definitely through the scenic rim and then as mentioned through the Lockyer Valley, Wyvernhoe outlook and then towards the north up towards Caboolture and through the southern parts of the Sunshine Coast through the Glasshouse Mountains. There may be some strong and potentially some significant thunderstorm potential up there with large hailstorms, damaging winds and heavy rainfall as well. But the key message here now for Brisbane and the Gold Coast, chances are smaller than what they are further inland. In terms of the outbreak uh, for Brisbane or the Gold Coast on a comparative scale, it's probably about a seven out of 10 setup as opposed to a nine out of 10 or even a 10 out of 10 setup for severe thunderstorms in this part of Queensland here. Toowoomba and Warwick out towards Gundawindi, Fallon and St. George. A few strong thunderstorms also expected later on in the afternoon as we get up towards the North Burnett forecast district as well. And this will push on later into the Capricornia coastline through late Saturday and into early Sunday or probably through early Sunday and towards late Sunday to be honest at that point in time. Thunderstorms are expected to be quite widespread through Sunday night into Sunday morning. Lots of thunderstorm activity tending to showers at times through Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon through southeastern Queensland. And then through early Sunday afternoon as this low pressure system continues to pull further out towards the east, it's going to spark another outbreak of thunderstorm activity across the mid-north coast and the northeast of New South Wales and potentially some strong or even supercellular thunderstorms expected along its dry line here out towards central Queensland. But this doesn't include southeastern Queensland. The mode for Sunday for southeastern Queensland, Brisbane and the Gold Coast is expected to be non-severe for the most part. We still may see some isolated severe thunderstorm activity, but it is still a little bit too early to tell exactly how strong the thunderstorms or how severe the thunderstorms are going to be through southeastern Queensland at this point in time. Still looking like there is some good potential out there. But why are these thunderstorms not as strong as what they uh, could be on the forecast for Saturday? Well, the key point here is that the dry line, which is where these thunderstorms develop along, is expected to be very far inland. If we learn one thing from the November 1st outbreak where severe thunderstorms are expected to be wild into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area, but some places completely missed out uh, in the end, it was the fact that the dry line was very, very far inland. And what this means is thunderstorms developing out here, they've got a long way to travel to the coastal areas, including Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And in that time, they're going to continue to steadily upscale. They're gonna to continue to grow in size and they're going to weaken off in terms of severity. That's just how thunderstorms work. They've got a lot of ground to cover, which means by the time they get towards Brisbane or the Gold Coast area, these thunderstorms would have been going for four, five, even six hours at some point or at some times. And uh, what that means is that these thunderstorms are likely to be multicellular, pulsy in nature or squally at nature in terms of what they're expected to be at the most severe side of things. It's definitely nothing in the way of crazy supercell thunderstorms. They just don't last that long in Australia. They can, but it's not often that we see thunderstorms of a supercell nature lasting more than about five or six hours. They can do it, but yet we just don't see it all that often. Conditions are very favorable though for thunderstorm activity on a Saturday. You can see there's very healthy convective available potential energy values, particularly along the Queensland New South Wales border. These values here approaching 2000, even up towards 2250 in a few spots. And that is enough to get the job done for severe thunderstorms. Good levels of wind shear as well. This continues through Friday's outbreak as well, albeit not as good, but conditions are looking very healthy for thunderstorms, uh, all things considered through Saturday and also through early Sunday morning through parts of central Queensland. Conditions not as healthy into the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area, but still looking relatively decent for thunderstorm activity. We've got that mid-level dry slot, which does present that hail risk for parts of the Lockyer Valley and into the scenic room as well, but not so much for the Brisbane or the Gold Coast area because they're that huge Humidity does begin to build a lot more consistently through the environment as we get towards the coastal regions. But yeah, overall looking like a pretty healthy outbreak and some pretty healthy storm potential coming through. And then as this rainfall continues to push through along Sunday, some decent rainfall accumulations are expected to be left in the wake of this thunderstorm outbreak as well. Pushing into the Capricornia coastline and parts of the Fraser coastline, widespread rainfall accumulation is expected through Sunday uh, morning into early Sunday afternoon of the 20 to 40 millimeter variety. And even a few spots expected to get up to about that 100 millimeter mark throughout this weekend's outbreak. A lot of this rainfall clearing through early Monday morning and the latest this rainfall is going to continue to for the central and the southeastern Queensland coastline is about Monday afternoon at the absolute latest. We will still see consistent and persistent thunderstorms and showers, some of which will be severe towards the north of Mackay. However, the strongest thunderstorm activity and the strongest rainfall activity is going to be in through the Atherton Tablelands and then into the Daintree Rainforest and through northern Queensland, where some isolated heavy rainfall accumulations are expected as a result of this rainfall coming through. But let's have a look at rainfall accumulations. You can see over a four-day period 
period from Friday and uh, towards Monday inclusive. Some half decent rainfall accumulations are now on the cards through parts of the South Burnett and into the Granite Belt and Darling Downs. Rainfall accumulations here could be as high as 100 millimetres. So anywhere in this red outline here is going to be looking at that 20 to 40 millimetre uh, type rainfall accumulations. And this also includes into the northeast of New South Wales as well. And then up into the Capricornia coastline up to about Rockhampton where this line then begins to cut inland completely bypassing Mackay and Townsville and then heading up towards North Queensland. Scattered rainfall accumulations above 50 millimetres are possible in this orange outline here which include the Granite Belt, the Darling Downs and parts of the South Burnett Forecast District. Depending on how severe the thunderstorms are Saturday night into Sunday morning and how much rainfall moves through here uh, Sunday night into Sunday morning will really drive these rainfall accumulations up and I'm not writing out isolated uh, 100 millimetre rainfall accumulations through this four day period here towards the north of Toowoomba uh, through parts of the miles of the Chinchilla area and then of course into the South Burnett Forecast District around Gympie, Kingaroy, Kilcoy, those locations and even into the Wyvernhoe Outlook too and parts of the scenic rim down towards Warwick and Stanford we may be seeing some strong rainfall accumulations in those areas too. Also some scattered rainfall accumulations approaching 50 millimetres inland from Townsville around and Charters Towers around the Hugh Endon and Forsyth area with a lot of pulse thunderstorm activity expected out here or outback pulse thunderstorm activity we may be seeing some strong rainfall potential up here as well. And then after that, you'll be very, very happy to hear that. A couple of days of dry conditions expected until another weekend of thunderstorms begins to build or another weekend of thunderstorms weekly begins to build. But it looks like we're at around the 24th is when thunderstorm activity begins to pipe up again properly through southeastern Queensland and the northeast of New South Wales. Whilst a few scattered thunderstorms are possible next weekend as well, or the following weekend, we'll be talking about this more widespread thunderstorm risk developing around the 24th of November at this point in time. We may be seeing some potentially strong or severe thunderstorms as well uh, around at that point in time. Now conditions have just got a whole lot more interesting in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and the Timor Sea. We may be talking about the potential for a strong uh, or even potentially severe tropical cyclone in the next two weeks or so. The situation right now includes a tropical low that's beginning to develop south of Bali here and Indonesia. It's pulling towards the West Australian coastline and it's expected to enhance shower and thunderstorm activity through the Kimberley region and also parts of the top end of the Northern Territory. This includes Broome, Kununurra, Wyndham and Fisher across in Western Australia and also Darwin and Catherine across the Northern Territory. Plenty of strong rainfall potential and plenty of thunderstorm potential over the next 14 days through this part of the Northern Territory in Western Australia, but also now the potential for a weak tropical cyclone to begin developing. Have a look at this. As this low pressure system pulls towards the West Australian coastline, it begins to get its act together towards the south of Timor. And then we see a full blown tropical cyclone on the European forecast developing around Monday the 17th of November. And this wastes no time and then intensifying and it intensifies quite quickly and quite dramatically as it moves into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, getting to a peak pressure of 974 millimetres bars here just to the north of Kalumbaru, albeit as a very small tropical cyclone. This will be approaching category three strength proportions. And why am I mentioning this? Well, there is actually some forecast model congruency. We've got a weak tropical cyclone developing on the GFS forecast, which I know spits boogies around this time of the year. And also a weak tropical cyclone now developing on the ICON forecast model as well at 987 millibars as a peak intensity. The axis is also calling for a weak tropical load to develop, but then moving into the Gulf of Carpentaria where it will be ripped apart by wind shear. Favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development lie in this black outline right now. There's low levels of wind shear, very warm sea temperatures pushing 31 or 30 2 degrees Celsius. And if this tropical low can remain small, not only is it going to remain relatively undetected by these forecast models, but also have a very easy time in, ten in intensifying. So what this means for the Northern Territory and the West Australian coastline, you are now on watch for a potential tropical low. Now, what this means is enhanced rainfall and enhanced thunderstorm activity, obviously, but it could also mean the strong potential for a tropical cyclone that could begin developing. This is a great time now to have your cyclone emergency kits in action here for Darwin, especially a big population centre lying right in the path of this potential tropical low. Get everything ready this week. The strong chance is right now that nothing is going to develop and it will be all, I guess, a wasted prospect, but it gets you ready ahead of tropical cyclone season. And this is the spot where we're expecting tropical cyclones to develop in the next two weeks as that Madden Julian oscillation pulse begins to move over here. So Monday onwards could be a bit interesting. I'll have some definitive answers on this tropical low developing by this weekend. At this point in time, I expect nothing more than a weak tropical low, but considering that it is expected to remain very, very small by major forecast models now, even the GFS, which has a large system bias, uh, if you get my drift, um, that is a good sign for a tropical cyclone to begin developing here sometime around Monday the 17th of November. So this is definitely now a place to watch and a feature to watch. 
On that note, though, I'm going to have to end at this forecast update. This is my second iteration of it. I forgot to press record on the first one, so happy days here. It's not going to be my day, apparently. But if you want to make it my day, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already. And let me know how I can improve in the comment section down below. And to the guys that do make my day, the channel sponsors and Facebook supporters whose names are on screen right now, I could not run this show without them. And I'm very, very grateful for their ongoing support to the Cyclones Oz channel. Massively appreciated as always. But that's going to do it for me today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this forecast update found it informative and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.